did take the advice of the PR guy, didn't you? I really don't remember it relating oh, to no. the decision. Uh, hang on now, please. Thank you. Uh, and that was my understanding at the time, that what he was trying to do was to minimise misinterpretation. It was wrong, because clearly, if... If, past, if all past cases needed investigating, they needed investigating. But at the time, that wasn't what the post office thought. And I think what he was trying to do here was to, as I say, to minimize misinterpretation and exaggeration in the media. Do you agree that his first point says, you should make a decision about the extent to, you, to which you review possible past miscarriages of justice by reference to the extent of media coverage that it will generate? It does say, it, it could be read that way, that wasn't my... Is there another way of reading it? That I wouldn't have... And, and if there is, please explain which words help to read it in a different way. He's saying, don't go back 10 years, or say that you'll go back 10 years. Our current approach would mean there's going to be some coverage, but not very much, the usual suspects. If we say we'll look back at past cases, we'll be on the front page. He's, he, isn't he directly saying? Yes, I, I, I can see that that's, that's what he's saying, but my... Mind th my mindset at the time when I received this is that we were working on specific cases that were coming forwards, and we opened up... No, 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 hold, hold on, Ms. Reynolds. The, the email that you had sent, to which this is a response, posits, should we look back 12 to yes, 18 months yes, since separation, yes, yes. or should we go back further? further Why aren't yeah, we going back yeah. further, five to yeah. 10 years? And this says, you can't do that. You'll be on the front page. That's a grossly improper perspective, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Do you know why he cut everyone else out of the chain and replied directly to you? No, I don't. Was he a very trusted advisor? He was trusted by all of the team. As, I mean, as I said yesterday, I, I trusted all of the team, none of them more than the others. Did you remain in contact with Mr. Davis after you left the post office? I did. Um, did you exchange messages with him about media statements that you might make and the media lines that you might take in the uh, announcement of this inquiry, for example? I believe the inquiry has texts that show that. I Even though you'd moved on, he was still advising you into 2020 as the lines to take in your media statements? I had kept in touch with Mr. Davis for reasons that um, were very personal to him, and I think he offered that advice at the time. <coughs> to what extent did what that Mr. Davis advise here affect your decision making? I would never, it was simply not the way I worked, have taken a decision based on the advice of one colleague. Never. Um, my, my way of working was to, to take as many different views as I possibly could and to involve those individuals in the decision making as much as I possibly could. Can we look at the top of page one, please? Your reply. Mark, thanks for this. I don't think we're too far apart. I didn't say this approach would be our media statement, so they'd need to be aligned. You're right to call this out. I will take your steer. You did take the advice of the PR guy, didn't you? 
I really don't remember it relating to the decision. Uh, hang on now, please. Thank you. The, as I tried to say before, my, what we were working to at this stage was numbers of cases going through a scheme and a scheme that was going to be opened up to anybody who wanted to come forwards. I understand how this reads, but I don't recall making any conscious decision not to go back and put in place a review of all past criminal cases. My, my, my conviction as we were going forwards in this was that this scheme would enable any case that want any postmaster that wanted their case to be reviewed, that the scheme would allow for that. You continue. There are two objectives. <laughs> the most urgent being to manage the media. The second is to make sure we do address the concerns of James Arbuthnot and Alan Bates, mainly looking forwards. But we should be aware of Alan Bates' driver is really justice for the past. Otherwise, they will call for reopening cases. Yes. It may be that we get to manage Alan Bates and James Arbuthnot by playing on the go ballistic view, i.e. I'll meet him privately to hear his views about these cases, but we cannot refer to anything uh, in relation to past convictions. Any challenge must be, it must go via normal legal route. Is that the way your mind worked at this time? The priority was to manage the media and then deal with the actual substance of issues? The, the media issue related to, I believe, um, because we were, we were right on the day or the day before the release of the second site interim report. And that's my recollection that that, that that is the media conversation that we were having. But what, what we're and talking about here is how far back a review of possible miscarriages of justice should go. Yes, and I'm not you closing say, that down at you all. You say there are two objectives, the most urgent being to manage the media. That, th I'm pretty sure that that was in relation to the interim report, which was due out any time, which as the inquiry has seen and, and, and heard from other people, there were issues in that report which the post office disagreed with and the team felt Second Sight hadn't taken account of. That, I think, was the issue that we were talking. So this was a really urgent today or tomorrow issue. And then there was the concerns looking forwards. Um, no, no, what you're saying here is you're right, Mark. We will put the past behind us. We won't look at past cases. We'll focus on the future. That isn't what happened. That, that, that simply isn't the case because the scheme was open to past cases. There was no and time... The, bur the burden was put on the um, sub-postmaster <coughs> to prove their case, wasn't it? Um... The, the scheme was open to any postmaster who wanted to bring their case forwards. It was advertised um, in various ways to encourage people to come forwards. There were other conversations going on at the same time as this exchange with colleagues. And it was very clear that any cases that included criminal convictions would need to go through the Court of Appeal and the normal legal routes. I don't think I understood any more about the legal side of things to, to, to have got involved in anything more complex than that. I believed very sincerely that the scheme we were putting in place would help. <laughs> 